Mazda is shrinking that investment into fully battery electrics. They're playing it even safer than I thought they were going to. Is this going to pan out well for them? Only time will tell. But they also, in this big announcement, talk about their hybrids, their next generation uh, Skyactiv Z engines. Guys, grab your snacks and drinks if you're a fan of Mazda. Make sure to buckle in, smash a like button, and let's get into it. Mazda's announced the light asset strategy. It's a kind way of saying, or or maybe a, a sophisticated way of saying, is like, we're not dropping billions and billions and billions of dollars or trillions of yen into EVs right now, right? We're, we're still playing it safe. We're gonna like dip our toes into the waters here and there. We're gonna realize this multi-solution for electrification through collaboration and Mazda Monosukuri Innovation 2.0 to improve development and production efficiency and enhance asset efficiency. Well, you know, look at look at Honda's philosophy. It's thin, light, and wise. Mazda's taking that to the nth degree. Like if you look at Honda, Honda relative to the size of the company for a Japanese company is spending so much money on battery electrics. Remember, Honda wants to be fully battery electric by 2040. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum is Mazda. Okay, from Japan anyways. Mazda has zero EVs. We're not counting uh, the MX-30 that was discontinued for America. You know, they have the plug-in hybrid of the large platform. And then the MX-30 is a plug-in hybrid rotary in other markets. But in terms of BEVs, they really are just going to be the last one on the beach, seeing everyone out to shore, waiting to see if any storm is going to smash those early uh, disembarkers, if that's the right word, disembarkees, and they'll wait and wait and wait. Maybe send a small EV out there to test the waters here and there, wait. I think it works for Mazda. I don't think it'll work for everyone, though. Mazda regards the period up to 2030 as the dawn elect of electrification. We're just getting started. And under its 2030 management policy, the company will advance electrification with multiple solutions to flexibly respond to diversifying customer needs and environmental regulations. The light asset strategy announced today is an implementation strategy to increase corporate value as a small player by increasing the utilization of existing assets, developing, producing, and introducing a wide range of products and electrification technologies in a timely manner. Mazda is about a third of the size of Honda, uh, about a little bit, maybe a little bit more than a third of the size of Nissan because Nissan keeps shrinking. Um, they're about a tenth of the size of Toyota. They don't want to pour a lot into something that might not be super um, sought after. You got to keep in mind, Mazda's major market is North America, like Subaru. You know, Subaru, however, is much more closely tied with Toyota. And so they'll be sharing much more, I would say, for BEVs, brand, uh, sorry, badge engineering, sharing motors, that sort of thing. I don't know how much Mazda is going to go down that road in terms of teaming up with Toyota for EVs, but let's keep reading. They'll have a 1.5 trillion yen investment in electrification by 2030. Announced in 2022 is, is now expected to reach 2 trillion yen due to effects of inflation. All right. So this really isn't them saying, hey, we're investing more money. It's just like saying, well, the, the, because of inflation, we have to invest more, not because we want to. But the total will be reduced to around one and a half trillion yen by optimizing battery investment. Of this, battery investment is expected to be halved from 750 billion yen, which takes into account the effects of inflation on the assumption that all batteries would be procured in-house by leveraging cl collaboration. They would be collaborating for batteries and not producing them in-house. That's a smart move. I said that years ago. When Mazda said they're developing their own solid-state batteries, I'm like, this is foolish. It's a waste of money. So they're saving $5 billion now or 750 billion yen, um, which was originally going to be for their own batteries. But look at this. Um, it looks like they're going to be shaving a ton of cost because they're developing batteries with their um, their Chinese joint venture with Chang'an. Now, Chang'an Mazda makes the EZ6 or the Mazda 6E for other markets. It's an E-Rev or extended range electric vehicle, as well as a fully battery electric. It's rear wheel drive. I would love to have this in America. It's never going to happen until they can start making them in Japan, which is a possibility as we'll, we'll talk about here is that they plan to make these EVs, of course, in, in Japan and export them around the world. I'd say for the, the Chinese market, 
is still going to be with Chang'an. They're not going to export vehicles from Japan into China. China has the lead. China is uh, the trendsetter, the EV um, and technological leader. Okay, and so the, their development for these EVs seemingly will happen largely with Chang'an in China. They'll take that and build on that technology in Japan and then export those EVs from there and maybe uh, extended range EVs to the United States at some point, but that's probably at the end of this decade. Now, if you guys wanna read more about their specifics and how they're revamping manufacturing, it's really nerdy, and unless I'm like in the the plant, it doesn't it doesn't really click with me. But let's get into the Skyactiv Z, their all new engine, which is a cornerstone of their EV era, complying with strict emission regulations such as Euro Seven, LEV Four, and Tier Four in the U.S. This combustion technology that approaches the ultimate combustion achieves both high fuel efficiency and driving performance. It will be combined, combined with Mazda's unique hybrid system introduced in the next gen CX-5 sometime in 2027. And this kind of correlates what I've been hearing from Japan is that the CX-5 will get a redesign in 2026, maybe announced here in 2025, redesign in 2026. It's much, it's not that it needs it because the CX-5 currently is so good, but we need a hybrid on it most importantly. But that hybrid will be a year delayed more than likely after the initial introduction of this next gen CX-5. The, the combustion improvement technology from Z will be developed in a large size inline six engines and will also be utilized in the missions development of rotary engines. Um, that's cool. So we also, so it seems like we have it in inline fours, we're going to have it in inline sixes, and you're going to have it in the rotary. In the future, the number of engine units, including Skyactiv Z, will be reduced to less than half, and control software will be consolidated by two thirds. All right. So they're downsizing the availability of engine configurations throughout the world. We don't have that many already here in the United States. Two and a half liter naturally aspirated, two and a half turbo. 3 liter, sorry, 3.3 liter inline six and inline four plug-in hybrid. I think that's all we have. Well, you have the MX-5 that has the two liter naturally aspirated, but the MX-5 will probably just get one engine in the future for the global market. Their BEV, their company's in-house developed EV specific platform. They're not doing the Subaru route. They're not joining forces with Toyota, at least completely. Maybe they'll share e-axles and some other hardware, maybe software, but their platform is going to be unique to Mazda. And this takes into account the ever-evolving trends in BEV technology and can be equipped with various types of batteries. I feel like every BEV platform can be outfitted with different types of batteries. Even though it is a BEV, it is fun to drive. Time will tell, all right? But maybe Mazda can do it. <laughs> You know, the Ionic 5N is a fun to drive e EV, all right? So fun to drive EVs are out there. It's just, they're just fewer and far between, right? Um, and they're looking for the kind of driver machine unity that is characteristic of Mazda. Mazda likes to say the relationship between horse and, and uh, rider. The company's in-house developed battery EV scheduled for introduction in 2027 will be produced domestically, so in Japan, for global development, all right? So they will not be making EVs out of that plant in Huntsville, Alabama. They'll not be making EVs, especially in Mexico with the uncertainty there. We'll have a hybrid CX-5 in 2027. We'll probably have a BEV-like CX-5 in 2027 as well. Maybe they come out around the same time. This is our first look at a dedicated EV. This almost looks like a, an Outlander from the side. Um, is this our first look? Is it with our sloping roof line? Is this our first look at Mazda's next gen uh, EV? It's possible. We don't have any details on anything other than it's coming in 2027. I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. We should get hopefully an announcement on some big Mazda product by the end of this year, that being the CX-5. All right, next gen. Time will tell. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more Mazda talk here on the channel. Have a great day and peace.